Hi everyone, James here from SOS again. Today's video we're just going to look at um, extracting the groove from a piece of audio and applying it to the rest of the track um, and also help uh, sync all of our elements up together rhythmically uh, to give a nice dancey groove. We'll also take a look at a way that we can uh, inject some lively human feel to our uh, MIDI notes as well. So first of all, let's just take a look. Assume we've just put this kick in um, and we've just programmed a bass line into our track uh, to start with and it sounds like this. And we find uh, a hat loop somewhere and we drag and drop it into our project and this is what it sounds like. Now the first thing I notice is that this hat loop is uh, quite swung and it's got a lot of groove and rhythm to it. And our bass line is actually a very straight. Um, so what we're looking to do here is uh, take some of the timing uh, from this audio file and apply it to the other elements in our track. So uh, what I'm talking about here is if we zoom right in um, and drag our playhead to the first uh, 16th division, um, you'll see that the, the, the hit here is not sitting exactly on the 16th grid. This one does, and then the fourth one here doesn't as well. And what happens when we uh, swing and groove is the first and the third hits act as an anchor and the second and the fourth um, get shifted slightly back towards the, the next anchor. And what this creates is a swung groove. Um, so what we're looking at doing is taking the timing discrepancies here of these notes that aren't hitting exactly on um, and applying that to different elements of our tracks. Because if we have a look at our bass here, you'll see that um, every one of our notes here is programmed to hit exactly on the grid. So the aim of extracting the groove from that other piece of audio is to grab our second and our fourth sixteenth hits and just shift them back slightly to create that kind of swung groove. Um, to do that uh, what we use in Logic is something called uh, flex time. Now without going too much into what flex time actually does because that's not in the scope of this video um, just to give you a quick rundown, FlexTime, once enabled, analyzes an audio region and picks out where each individual hit happens. Uh, it does that by reading the transients of a piece of audio, and a transient is the initial peak in volume of a waveform. Uh, so it'll go along and pick out um, each little transient and make note of where those hits occur. And what will then happen is we'll turn it into a groove template that can be applied to other elements in our track, um, both audio and MIDI. So to do that, the first thing we want to do is highlight a region. Go up to this little uh, double helix looking button, which is this show hide flex button. Turn that on, and as soon as you do that, you'll notice you get these extra, this extra drop down and this extra button. So this button is the enable flex. So the first thing we want to do is turn that on to enable flex for that track. And each one of these little dotted lines represents uh, a point where Logic has picked up a transient, essentially each hit of the audio file. Um, what we then want to do is go up to our region inspector up here, which is the little eye up here or eye on our keyboard. And you want to access the region inspector, um, head to our, the quantize drop down, click it, and you'll see down the bottom here we have make groove template. So when I hit that, uh, Logic will create a new template and you'll see it down the bottom here. And it will be named after the region that um, you're extracting it from. So it will be called hat. So click make groove template. Uh, once that template is made, uh, we don't need to leave Flex on for this because we're not actually making any adjustments to this audio file. So we can actually disable Flex for that. And let's go back down to our bass, open up the piano roll. Here in the piano roll, what I can do is Command A, which highlights all of the notes within the piano roll here. And then I can go up to my quantize drop down. And you'll see right down the bottom, we have one called Hat Loop, which is the one we just extracted. So when I click this, you'll notice that um, some of the notes here will just shift slightly, um, and they're the ones that need to sync up with the, uh, the groove of that hat loop. So let's do that. Go down to the bottom, hit hat loop, and you'll see some of those notes just shift slightly to the right to sync up. So let's have a listen to what that hat loop sounds like now with the groove applied to the bass. <laughs> And without. And with. Yep, see, much more groovy. 
Uh, one thing you want to look out for, um, sometimes like here, you'll have notes um, because they've been shifted cross over one another. Now, sometimes it won't be a problem depending on how you've programmed your synth, but in this situation, we actually want to make sure none of the notes are crossing over. Let's just bring him back as well. Good. So it's just one thing to keep your eye on. Um, so that sounds to me much more um, groovy and much more cohesive, working much better with that hat loop that we have. Um, the other alternative we have in this situation, um, maybe we want our track to stay straight and we don't necessarily want that swung groove to be on the hats, but as it's an audio file, you know, we can't re-record it or anything like that. So what we could actually do is the reverse. So I'll go back in here. And Command A to highlight everything, and I'll set this back to 16th quantization. Go up here to the drop down, set 16th, and it all goes back to our 16th quantization. And this time we'll enable flex again. Um, and instead of extracting the groove this time, what we're actually going to do is just quantize it to 16th. So through the same menu, we highlight it, enable flex, we go up to our quantize drop down in the region inspector, and just select 16th note. And you'll see it's just now um, quantized our audio here to remove any swing and groove and now it works much better with the uh, bass line. Um, but with this piece, uh, I actually want the groove. I don't want to be straight 16th, so I'll go back and I'll turn that off. Disable the flex and we'll go back in here and turn that back to hat loop. Right, and we'll actually bring in some other elements um, and apply it to those as well. So let's bring in uh, the rest of the percussion. And we'll apply that same groove to all of these as well. And you'll probably notice it most on the rim shots and the claps if you're paying attention. So one cool thing with this is you can actually highlight all the regions you want to apply this to at once. Double click to open the piano roll. And now we're looking at all the MIDI, reg all the MIDI information of the selected regions. We can Command A to highlight all of them and we can quantize to our hat loop again. See so just some of them shift ever so slightly and let's have a listen now. Much more groovy. So now let's have a look at this shaker loop here because this shaker loop is um, just an audio file and it's actually very straight compared to uh, the grooves that we've got going on. So let's just listen to those two together. Uh, this one's much more straight. Uh, so what we want to do, um, we can apply this same groove that we've been applying to all of our MIDI. We can actually do that to audio within our project as well. So we can select the region, enable flex again, go up to our quantize and just select that same hat loop. And when I select that, you'll see um, the notes shift slightly, or sorry, the hits shift slightly to uh, sync up with that groove. and that's working much better. Now one other thing with that is um, once you've actually applied that groove, if for some reason uh, you want don't want that groove to be 100% uh, maybe you want to back it off slightly back towards sort of the straight 16th that you had it on, well what you can actually do is um, with the region selected and the groove applied you can actually go down to this Q strength here. Now if you don't see that you just tick this little uh, more drop down and under Q strength you can actually just back off and as I back off you see it slowly starts to shift those um, beats that were moved um, back towards their original position. Now if you set it to 0%, um, the groove is not applied whatsoever. So that's a cool thing to know. You can have it that groove applied 100% or you can back it off sort of somewhere in between, anywhere in between um, that you prefer. Uh, if you do that with audio, what you want to do, if you want that groove to be applied, is you need to leave uh, flex enabled for that track. Uh, so now with all of those together, much more groovy. Uh, finally, let's do that with our um, chord stabs up here. So I'm going to highlight them all, open up the piano roll, command A to highlight them all, and then quantize to that hat loop as well. And let's have a listen to it all. Now if we want to hear it without, what we can actually do is um, highlight all of our regions here, our MIDI regions, Command A and just set it back to 16th notes and then have a listen. So this is without. And 
and then set it back for with. <laughs> It's a much more groovy. Uh, if you want to get people dancing, you want to pay attention to these kind of things and have your elements working well together rhythmically. When they are working well rhythmically, um, and you've applied grooves like this, it tends to have a much more organic feel, which is uh, typical of more modern dance electronic music, and tends to make the grooves more interesting over time rather than, say, a straight 16th machine type beat. Uh, that's what gets people tapping their feet. Now let's say you don't have an audio file to extract the groove from. Let's just get rid of those audio files now. And let's just say you've just programmed everything in um, and you want to apply some groove or some swing to your track. We can still do that. Um, and the way we can do that is, again, in the piano roll, if we highlight um, the MIDI in our track, I open up the piano roll, highlight them all. I'm going to set it back to 16th because we don't, let's just assume we don't have that groove template to work with. Um, what we can actually do is um, adjust some swing into our project. So if I zoom in, you'll see with it all highlighted and it's set to 16th, as I increase the slider here, you'll see the swing being applied to our track. So if I go to the extreme 100%, <laughs> you can see there's a lot of swing applied there. Now you can mix into taste here uh, if you don't want something too extreme, you can go somewhere in the middle if that's what you're after. Um, but that's quite a handy thing to know if you're looking to get some groove into your track without um, any audio files to extract the grooves from. Uh, there's also pre-made um, swing sets here from A, B, C, D, E, F, um, eighth notes, sixteenth notes, triplets. Uh, so depending on the piece you're working with, different ones here might suit better. So we recommend experimenting here and seeing what each one does. Now, alternatively, also, there is another option too. There's plenty of resources online where you can get uh, free MIDI grooves from, and you can actually download a bunch of free packs that have uh, different uh, MIDI template grooves that you can load into your project and treat the same. So, for instance, um, I've got some already here in the project. If we go down, I've got a hidden folder here with some MIDI grooves in there. Um, so let's just have a listen. You'll see there's some more extreme than the others, and you'll notice the names of um, some classic old drum machines here. So uh, there's a company called Samples from Mars. They do a free MIDI pack that contains, or sorry, MIDI groove pack that contains um, a lot of shuffle grooves from old school uh, drum machines and whatnot. A really cool resource. Uh, have a Google of it. Try and find them. Free pack to download. And then essentially all you do is you drag and drop those MIDI files in with the with the swing or the grooves that you want. Um, and just the same way, you can highlight the MIDI region there. You can go up to Quantize and you can go Make Groove Template. Uh, with that done, what you can then do is go to the rest of your projects, go into the MIDI and set that to the MP60 16 swing. And we can also go and do that to our audio regions as well. And this is what that sounds like. So you can do this with um, MIDI files that you can find online. Um, you can do it also with uh, maybe a drum sample from your favorite drummer um, or even just a piece of a track that you like. You can um, drop it into your project, whether it's audio or MIDI, and then um, set it up as a uh, groove template and apply it to the rest of your track. Now one other element to um, bringing some liveliness and some groove into your tracks is uh, humanization. So when we program all of our stuff in the computer, uh, we tend to write everything snap to the grid. Uh, all the note lengths tend to be the same length, all the velocities tend to be the same velocity. Now if you're playing it in, not the same story because obviously your velocity and the note length and the timing all comes from your playing. So uh, the thing to note is even if you're the best player in the world, uh, you're not as accurate as a computer. And now the problem with that is when we're making dance music or any music in the, for that matter, uh, we actually want that human feel, that human vibe to come through, which can be hard to achieve if you're not a player of an instrument. So what we can actually do is use a feature within Logic to inject some uh, random values into things like uh, our note lengths. 
so differing length slightly. Uh, our note starting points, so some might start slightly before others, um, and our small discrepancies in the velocity values as well. Uh, so what we're going to do now is take a look at applying that quickly and easily through one of Logic's features. So uh, let's go back to the baseline and have a look. And once I'm in there, I'm going to press Command A to make sure everything is uh, highlighted. And we're going to go up to Functions, MIDI Transform and Humanize. Now in here, we've got this menu that looks a bit confusing, but all it is is saying uh, the position is randomized by plus or minus 10 ticks. Um, and velocity and note length are also randomized plus or minus by 10. Now, feel free to click and drag up to adjust the values here. But I tend to find that the 10, 10, 10 um, default works quite well for what we're trying to achieve here. So when I hit select and operate, you'll see a few of these notes shift around a little bit, the lengths change and subtle variations in the velocities. And let's have a listen to that. And if I undo that, and with, to me that sounds miles better. Um, it actually sounds like someone's played. It's got groove, it's got feel, uh, and it's quite lively. So what we can do now is actually go to the rest of the elements in our track. Uh, one thing to note is uh, this humanized function only works with MIDI, so we can't apply this to uh, the audio within our track. Let's highlight everything. Command A, same thing, functions, MIDI transform, humanize, and then select and operate. And you'll see everything just shifts slightly and some of those values of the velocities change. And if I find, uh, let's just go into the one MIDI region here, two, and you'll see the note lengths are also varied slightly as well as the start positions. So now that that's applied to everything, let's hear all of those elements in our track with humanize applied. Now if you ask me, that feels a hell of a lot more lively, a hell of a lot more dancey than what we had originally. Uh, and in this situation, we've applied the swing and then put the human eyes on top. So what we have here is a uh, human eyes swung groove, which makes it a double whammy in that sense. Now finally, one thing I wanted to show you is uh, one other way to apply groove as well. Um, you can actually use something in Logic called Groove Tracks. Uh, to access that, we right-click on a track, go Track Header Components, and make sure this Groove Track is ticked, which mine currently is. If it's not, just click it. And then over on the left-hand side, when you hover over a track number, you get this little star. So if I click that star, what that actually does is sets the leader, if you will, uh, that's going to set the groove for the rest of our track. So once we've done that, we can actually turn on individual tracks to sync up with that groove that we've just applied. Um, it's essentially doing the same thing as extracting the groove and then applying it to the rest, but the main limitation with this way is that you can only use one track to set the groove um, for your whole project. So I can't have multiple ones. So let's say for instance, I had two different sections of my track. One was set by maybe the drums uh, and the percussion and the, the second uh, part was set by maybe some rhythmic stabs that I had and I wanted to swap the groove leader over between the two. Um, using this way, uh, it's not possible because we can only use the one track to set the groove for the whole project. So in that situation, um, using the groove templates and extracting the templates and manually applying them to the elements we want where we want is a much better alternative. So that brings us to the end of the video on uh, groove and humanization. Uh, we recommend uh, experimenting with that, find different audio files with different grooves, uh, extract them, apply them, uh, see what results that may yield. Sometimes it may not work as well as expected, other times it works amazing. Uh, so we recommend just experimenting with that. So thank you very much for joining us and we'll see you next time.